Hello and welcome to Vera Voices. I'm Michael Jacobson, director of the Vera Institute of Justice. We're here today with Phil Kazanitz, uh, an old friend and uh, nationally known academic who researches immigration issues. Phil has been the longtime executive officer of the Graduate Center Department of Sociology. Um, and he's recently been relieved of those duties and now can concentrate on his academic pursuits, which largely involve immigration. And so why don't you tell us a little about what your most recent scholarly work is on immigration issues. Back in 2008, uh, I published uh, the final book in a long, coming out of a long research project on the incorporation of the children of immigrants in Greater New York. This was a collaboration with John Mollenkoff, also of CUNY, and Mary Waters at Harvard. And we were really trying to get at the question of what uh, becoming American meant for not just immigrants, but their U.S.-born kids, or also for those kids who were born abroad but raised uh, in the U.S. And one project that Mary and I are currently involved in is a reassessment of what ideas about ethnic difference and racial justice uh, mean for the children of immigrants and also what immigration has meant for uh, categories like minority um, that exist in the United States. How, you know, our heritage of dealing with issues of race and ethnicity has been complicated by the fact that we've become so much more a diverse society in the last 30, 40 years. And so what specifically are you finding, both in terms of the sort of racial justice issues, about the incorporation of immigrants and their children generally? In terms of education, uh, children of immigrants raised here tend to be uh, doing considerably better than their immigrant parents and by most comparisons better than native minorities, better than African Americans and longtime Latinos. Um, different groups do quite differently. Uh, some of the Asian groups are doing considerably better than native whites. Um, for Latino immigrants and for Afro-Caribbean and other black immigrants, the numbers are somewhere in between native whites and native minorities. Right. Um, so it's a mixed picture, but on the whole, not a terrible picture. Labor force participation seems to be quite high. There's some controversy over arrest rates, because that's always the good indicator. You know, are these people all becoming criminals or something like that? Um, but in general, the evidence seems to be that immigrant communities, communities that are dominated by very recent immigrants, have very low rates of arrest and crime. Um, no one's exactly sure why, maybe because people are afraid of being deported, maybe because their reporting rates of crime are low because people aren't cooperating with police, but it could also just be that immigrants have very low rates of crime. Um, their children, again, it varies massively by group, but on the whole, their children have lower, uh, more likely to get in trouble uh, with the law than their immigrant parents, like that's assimilation, right. you know. Um, but less than native minorities. Right. And in fact, in, in our study in New York, even those immigrant groups who had the highest crime rates, their crime rates were just about, their arrest rates were just about the same as that of native whites. Mm -hmm. So in the face of really sort of a high level of political toxicity, and I'm sure fear, uh, it's, it's, it's nice to know that there are still, even in the face of all that, yeah. um, that there are some real positive outcomes. Politics and policy on this issue are amazingly data proof. Um, you know, it, there really are broad consensuses that all of the uh, research comes to that have made zero impact on the political debate. Very similar in criminal to criminal justice. Precisely, precisely. It's, it's the, the facts seem to have very little to do with what people say. But I think the other development that's really quite disturbing here uh, has been the large growth of an undocumented population. When we started to tighten uh, immigration controls, particularly on the Mexican border, but generally tighten uh, uh, the ability to immigrate into this country legally, um, we didn't end up deterring the flow of undocumented immigrants very well, um, because we never got that tight. We did, however, make it a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to enter the country illegally. As there became less and less opportunities to do that, okay, um, you had more and more people who'd been here longer and longer periods, put down roots, completely part of American society, uh, and their kids, some of whom born here, U.S. citizens, some of whom born there but raised almost virtually their entire lives here, um, 
suddenly finding themselves permanently in this undocumented status. It's now probably in the neighborhood of 11 million people. Right, and I've heard that figure a lot. And so what, so it's 11 million in the, in the you know, 2010 era. Right. And what, what would that have been 15, 20 years ago? Probably no more than two or three million. Really? Yeah. But we haven't had those, that number hasn't been whittled down by gradual legalization right. or by return to home countries. Right. So this is like the semi-permanent group of folks who are part of the society, economically, obviously, and therefore socially, and therefore culturally, but not politically. But it sounds like two of the huge sort of unintended policy consequences of the desire to control and limit and reduce immigration and immigrants is that we have the same numbers, right. more undocumented, mm -hmm. right, more sort of social and political problems, mm -hmm. all stemming from a policy um, right. to have fewer and less. The story was actually better than most people had assumed in the 90s. Right. You know? So in some ways, we're, we're taking something that we were doing well you know, and screwing it up. And so you mentioned the children of undocumented mm -hmm. uh, immigrants. And can you talk a little about that? I mean, what their, um, what the experience for them is now like, given all that's happening? Communities in which large numbers of the parents are um, undocumented immigrants, have no political voice, don't want to be involved in politics or fighting for better schools, in which the voting population is of a different ethnic group, very often older, very often doesn't have kids in schools, um, and for these obvious reasons, you see this disinvestment, okay, in many cases in terms of education. So this really does seem to have an effect. Just having parents who are political unpersons seems to have a negative effect. The other group, of course, uh, are the people that increasingly are called the Dreamers uh, after the Dream Act. And these are the folks who were born abroad, aren't U.S. citizens, um, but were raised here. English speaking, in most cases, people who've spent virtually their entire lives here. And there we are really beginning to see some really tragic effects. In a lot of cases, these young people don't even realize they're undocumented until they're 16 or 17 years old. Because there's really no reason why it impacts their lives until they're 16 or 17 years old. Then suddenly, oh, I can't get an after school job. Oh, I don't qualify for college loans. Oh, um, there's certain states in which even attending college is going to be problematic. If I can get college loans and I can actually get uh, in-state tuition in college, turns out I don't qualify for various kinds of financial aid. Uh, if I do manage to somehow get a college education despite that, I then can't work. Increasingly at 16, 17, 18, precisely the moment at which you're hoping people are beginning to sort out their ambitions and their career plans, people are very often just giving up, suddenly realizing that they can't figure out how to make this work. My colleague Rob Smith uh, likes to talk about the fact that America has been engaged in um, what he describes as a cruel natural experiment, before and after the last big amnesty with Erica. You know. And the pre-ERCA groups you know, are doing remarkably well in lots of lots of ways. Post-ERCA, where it became much, much harder and really, particularly for certain groups like Mexicans, almost impossible for people who didn't have close U.S. citizenship relatives or extraordinary skills to become U.S. citizens, that we start to see just real divergent pathways and real divergent outcomes. For folks for whom this is clearly not a question of their culture or their ways of life, because they're the same folks. Right. You know, and really because of the historical change with Erica. Can you see, uh, you know, something in the um, sort of social structural conditions, you know, changing that, you know, dials this back a little or, or not? After this election cycle, there are some real possibilities. Um, for one thing, there really has been a kind of a, an elite consensus on this for a very long time. Basically, Clinton, Bush, Obama, all were essentially on the same page, which is tougher border control mixed with a path for legalization of some kind for folks who are here for a long time, certainly straightening out the problems of the dreamers in, in, in these most extreme situations, you know, with some limits. And all the polling shows that something in the neighborhood of two-thirds of the American people favor that. So I think some attempt to legalize um, uh, the people that we already have combined with uh, some reform that allows our immigration system to respond to what our labor needs really are. And ironically, 
the downturn in the economy may actually be a, an opportunity here because the huge, you know, the, the combination of the downturn in the economy and demographic changes in Mexico mean that we're probably not going to get the numbers for the next couple of years that we have in the past. So this may in fact be the opportunity to straighten out the problem we have or that we've created by dumb policy and come up with a solution that will work for the future. And hopefully after the next presidential election, a certain amount of sanity will return to the political process and that might happen. Okay, well from your lips. <laughs> uh, but on that upbeat notion, uh, we'll end and I want to thank you so much thank for doing you. this.